All right, it happened after months of doubt, speculations, and negotiation. While well, President Trump made history, he became the first president in U.S. history to hold direct talks with North Korea. And by all accounts, this summit went very well, exceeding expectations. Now, the meetings between President Trump and Kim Jong-un were reportedly productive, a solid first step in negotiating what is the complete, verifiable, irreversible denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. Now, Trump and Kim even signed a bilateral agreement based on four key points. First, the two countries agreed to establish new relations. Next, the countries promised to work toward peace on the Korean Peninsula. Third, Kim Jong-un reaffirmed his commitment towards the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. And fourth, and this is not really widely reported, very important, though, North Korea agreed to recover and return the remains of American soldiers that were killed during the Korean War. And President Trump and Kim Jong-un had this to say after signing that joint resolution. Let's take a look. The letter that we're signing is very comprehensive, and I think both sides are going to be very impressed with the result. A lot of goodwill went into this, a lot of work. A lot of preparation. We're very proud of what took place today. Uh, I think our whole relationship with North Korea and the Korean Peninsula is uh, it's going to be a very much different uh, situation than it has in the past. We both want to do something. We both are going to do something. And we have developed a, a very special bond. So uh, people are going to be very impressed. People are going to be very happy. And we're going to take care of a very big and very dangerous problem for the world. Now, today, the positive reaction continued. Just moments ago, the president tweeted, quote, the world has taken a big step back from potential nuclear catastrophe and more rocket launches, nuclear testing or research. The hostages are back home with their families. Thank you, Chairman Kim. Our day together was historic, and it is important to remember these talks occurred only after the release of three American hostages, after an agreement from Kim Jong-un to halt nuclear tests and ICBM tests and firing missiles over Japan, and, of course, North Korea's destruction of one of their key missile launch sites. And Kim even, remember, he crossed the DMZ for the first time into the arms of the South Korean president, and all of this without any concessions from the United States, nothing. And in my interview with President Trump, he even indicated that North Korea's concessions will go much deeper than what they said openly. You look at what he's done. So we got our hostages back, but they've blown up one of their sites, one of their testing sites, their primary testing site. In fact, some people say their only testing site. They're getting rid of a missile, which isn't in the document that was done afterwards. They're getting rid of a missile testing site. They're doing so much now. So. It's a process, and it's, it's really moving rapidly. And meanwhile, shortly after signing the agreement and wrapping up the talks, President Trump held a very lengthy news conference, giving immediate reaction to his historic meeting. I got to sit in the second row. Jim Acosta was four seats down. Fake news CNN. Take a look. Chairman Kim and I just signed a joint statement in which he reaffirmed his unwavering commitment to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. He was very firm in the fact that he wants to do this. I think he might want to do this as much or even more than me, because they see a very bright future for North Korea. The sanctions will come off when we are sure that the nukes are no longer a factor. I noticed that some of the people were saying that uh, the president has agreed to meet. He has given up so much. I gave up nothing. I'm here. I haven't slept in 25 hours, but I thought it was appropriate to do because we've been negotiating for literally round the clock. Otto Warmbier is a very special person, and he will be for a long time in my life. His parents are good friends of mine. I think without Otto, this would not have happened. Otto did not die in vain. He had a lot to do with us being here today. The president has more to say on Otto Warmbier in our interview. Now, we have contrasted on this show the stark differences between a strategy of peace through strength versus a strategy of bribery in the appeasement and bowing before dictators. Now, tonight, that contrast is all too clear once again. And the similarities between former President Reagan and President Trump are now coming into the fore. 
uh, the weak, the feckless leadership from Jimmy Carter that made way for Ronald Reagan, who was left to deal with a world that was in massive turmoil. And the same can be said of Obama's feeble, weak, pathetic, feckless strategy of appeasement that was ushered in, well, gave the opportunity to usher in Donald Trump, and both Trump and Reagan had very tough talk for their international adversaries. Reagan calling the former Soviet Union an evil empire. Many in the media freaking out that the California cowboy Reagan was leading us towards a nuclear war. Let's go through history. Take a look. They preach the supremacy of the state declare its omnipotence over individual man and predict its eventual domination of all peoples on the earth. They are the focus of evil in the modern world. So in your discussions of the nuclear freeze proposals, I urge you to beware the temptation of pride, the temptation of blithely uh, declaring yourselves above it all and label both sides equally at fault. To ignore the facts of history and the aggressive impulses of an evil empire, to simply call the arms race a giant misunderstanding, and thereby remove yourself from the struggle between right and wrong and good and evil. Now, of course, just months ago, President Trump also engaged in tough rhetoric, even calling Kim Jong-un un little rocket man. Just like Reagan, the media went into a complete meltdown, once again predu predicting a nuclear holocaust. Remember these remarks from President Trump. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. Frankly, uh, the people that were questioning that statement, was it too tough? Maybe it wasn't tough enough. They've been doing this to our country for a long time, for many years. And it's about time that somebody stuck up for the people of this country and for the people of other countries. And what they've been getting away with is a tragedy, and it can't be allowed. If anything happens to Guam, there's going to be big, big trouble in North Korea. If he does anything with respect to Guam or any place else that's an American territory or an American ally, he will truly regret it, and he will regret it fast. Now, our next comparison surrounds military strategy that both President Trump, President Reagan, they ramped up military spending, military drills, a military presence, reaffirmed strategic commitments to shield our allies from hostile adversaries. And one more similarity comes from the two presidents' willingness to walk away from the table. And before ultimately negotiating the end of the Cold War, well, President Reagan, you remember, while well, he walked away from talks with Mikhail Gorbachev and Reykjavik. And a few weeks ago, President Trump actually canceled this North Korean summit over a dispute and has frequently asserted his willingness to walk away from a bad deal. And oh, yeah, a bonus. Both Reagan and Trump oversaw booming economies, uh, both implementing significant tax reform, tax cuts, removing burdensome regulation and bureaucracy they both inherited. And of course, despite what we know from history, peace through strength works. No one in the mainstream media saw this coming, but they should have. We shouldn't have been surprised. But then again, these are the same people. They were wrong about Donald Trump winning the Republican primary, laughing when he got into the race. The same people wrong about Trump defeating Hillary Clinton in the general election. And the same people who were wrong about Trump, Russia, collusion, and a so-called scandal. When it turns out, the only one colluding with the Russians were Hillary Clinton. And of course, they're completely obsessed with anything tabloid, stormy, 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 and other ridiculous topics. Take a look. This could be the last nail in the coffin. Yeah. Stormy Daniels is causing stormy weather. Porn star Stormy Daniels claims President Trump broke the law, had her bullied. Does Stormy Daniels have the president's number? It sure seems that way. President Trump might have met his match uh, with Stormy Daniels. How is Stormy weathering this? Stormy speaks. It's not clear what he meant by whole countries. Are you shocked or surprised by this? I'm not surprised. In, in one way, I'm proud. I am a proud Polar. No, we are not all created equal, at least not if you are born in, as the president put it, a whole country. The word house instead of whole, as in house countries, not whole countries. I guess he's a polar. Is there a difference if the president said uh, whole house? Are they ever going to learn? Apparently not. They're so ideologically driven. Not anytime soon. Listen to how a CNN fake news panel covered Trump's historic summit.
I want to bring it back to the menu for a second, not just because I'm hungry, <laughs> but because typically the White House releases these kinds of details after, for example, the French president comes to the White House or another head of state comes for a state visit. So by releasing the details of the menu, this is again legitimizing Kim Jong-un. One particularly interesting thing about the menu is I was thinking as you were reading all that out, Don, the poor North Korean people, if 89, they knew yeah. what is being dished out there, they, they can't even imagine the types of foods that you that you've rolled off your tongue. Right, because they, they just don't. They, it's a it's a poor country, and because of Kim Jong Un uh, himself and his and his family. Again, uh, you're right. Beef short ribs, combination of sweet and sour crispy pork, and yangu fried rice, yangzu fried rice, soy braised codfish. I mean, that's <laughs> that sounds really yummy and very expensive. Sounds yummy and expensive. That's news. Now, of course, fake news, CNN's horrible coverage. It's only the tip of the iceberg. Watch this. A summit is not an accomplishment for the American president, Brian. Uh, it is a major accomplishment for Kim Jong-un. And in fact, the spectacle of seeing the American flags along with the DPRK flags as the backdrop for that handshake is really jarring, actually, to, to see, to witness. In fact, I would say it's somewhat disgusting. It is actually a debasement of, of the American flag. This is a despotic regime that murders its own citizens. And so we're putting him on the same stage as the American president. I don't think we should discount the idea. It's not a coincidence that this is precisely what Putin desires. He places an overemphasis on personal chemistry and not realizing that countries have interests. They represent their interests. He, Kim Jong-un, did a very good job of representing the interests of his nation and his own personal interests, and he snookered Donald Trump. It may be okay in the real estate business, but it's odious and disgusting when he is fawning over one of the most vicious dictators on the planet. You look at the polls, uh, it's really interesting because the more we're talking about North Korea, um, you know, the, like the less we're talking about Russia, right? The less we're talking about um, issues at home. This hatred now clearly borders on psychosis. If this were a major summer featuring Robert Mueller and his Russian witch hunt, every anchor would be here 24-7 and they'd all be present. They'd travel 50 hours in the air for that. Now, by the way, you can always count on MSNBC. They weren't here. Rachel Maddow, where were you? Chris Hayes, where were you? Joe and Mika? I guess too long in a plane for both of you. After all, it doesn't fit your false narrative, the caricature and the lies that you manufacture single-handedly single every minute of every day. And while the mainstream media was busy trashing the president and his push for peace in North Korea a few years ago, they were stepping all over themselves to praise President Obama in his horribly the flawed and defunct Iranian deal, which was the dumbest deal in world history. $150 billion to radical mullahs in Iran, chanting death to America, death to Israel, burning American flags, Israeli flags. It doesn't get any dumber than this, but they all in the media loved it. Take a look. The U.S. and world powers reaching a major agreement with Iran, blocking one of our biggest rivals from developing a nuclear weapon. The president is about to deliver a statement on this historic nuclear deal reached with Iran overnight. This agreement is supposed to freeze that country's pursuit of a nuclear weapon. Has the U.S. and its allies successfully blocked Iran from making a nuclear bomb, at least for now? But tonight, the United States could be entering a new era in its relationship with Iran. I think it begins to change the dynamics of a tense relationship of 36 years between Washington and Tehran. I think the deal provides more than the United States anticipated, uh, and I think it could help prevent an arms race uh, in the region that would be detrimental to not just the Middle East, but to the whole world. Seems that they all had that Chris Matthews thrill running up and down their leg, but obviously this media is incapable of covering this president, President Trump, in any fair, unbiased way. And in that sense, oh, his success is their failure. They would have to admit they're wrong. And in doing so, by the way, that means if they're correct, the world would be less safe. President successful? How can they not see how completely dishonest and agenda-driven they really are? Now, so far, betting against President Trump has not been working out particularly well for any of them. They keep getting pretty much everything wrong. So maybe it's time for them to start asking themselves, what is in the best interest of the people of the United States? And maybe they should just stop pushing their radical leftist agenda. 
The media said Trump would be an unmitigated disaster. In 500 days, what's happened? He's tallied a tremendous record of accomplishment. Look at your screen. As we pointed out many times, this is especially true on the economy, breaking unemployment records across the board, generating wealth like never before. And that's why tonight we are hopeful that progress will happen on the Korean Peninsula. It's good for everybody. It's good for the world. In fact, progress must happen on the Korean Peninsula. Look at the map right there on your screen. See the city of Seoul, South Korea, its population nearly tops 10 million people, making it more populous than even New York City. And Seoul is only located 35 miles away from the DMZ, well within striking distance of Kim Jong-un and only miles away from tens of thousands of American soldiers who are tasked with protecting South Korea. One nuclear weapon could wipe it off the face of the planet. And tonight, everyone in the world should be rooting for the president's success here in the region. It's a worthy cause, a necessary cause, and millions of lives literally are at stake. 